this is the most anti-democratic piece of legislation being put before this parliament. I repeat it again, it is anti-democratic. It is against the values of this democracy, this parliament, our constitutional sovereignty. It is against the principles of law and ethics. What is this? Our police attacking us. How dare you? Peaceful protesting is not illegal in New Zealand. This is this has just gone too far. I have a plan of our plan. It's just to instruct the police and the execution of their duties. You may be arrested. Do you have any conscience? What do we have to find you? Nothing! <gasps> you're right, you're right. We're actually inviting our Tupuna to actually come on the sequoi with us. It actually looks after us and um, can guide us, protect us. You treat adults in a democracy responsibly. You allow them proportionally to take back their lives. Because I put this warning there now, if we don't give it to them, they'll take it back. They see me rolling. We are on the Freedom Rally Convoy 22. Yes. Too many people getting hurt. I'm a nurse by background, so you know I've done my homework and, and watched the stuff unfold, and none of it makes sense. Oh, you're the man, words. I rise in opposition to this COVID-19 response vaccinations legislation bill. It says that if you are an unvaccinated person who wants to go get a haircut, you can't. The government has rushed it through Parliament with no due process whatsoever. No consultation, no regulatory impact statement, no proper bill of rights analysis, nothing. With government mandates, I chose not to be vaccinated for legitimate health reasons and I couldn't carry on teaching a job that I love. I'm not the only psychiatrist in the Wellington region who is not working out. The mental health system is crawling along on a wing and a prayer already and they're going to get rid of good people who are making good contributions. Are you kidding me? Section 5 of the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act says that limitations on the rights and freedoms are only subject to limitations that can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. The right to refuse medical treatment, the right to manifest religion and belief, and the right to work. Well, it's almost like, you probably don't see it like this, the two different classes of people, if you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated, you have all these rights. If you are vaccinated... That is what it is, so, yep, yep. We do a lot of our cultural stuff anymore, eh? Hey? You know, like, hui, we can't hungi, we can't tangi. If, you, if you've got to be double jab for the marae, it means you can't come home. So I got up and went to the gate here. Haramai, haramai, tangata whenua said you can come in here. You like that? And we sat down and then someone said, are you going to camp here? Yeah. And we thought, well, we've got a tent. So we got our tent out, we put the first tent down in the corner here. And we've met pharmacists, we've met people from all walks of life. The three people you're talking to, engineer, mathematician and lawyer. I've been trying to alert Parliament to important safety concerns on behalf of everyone, but no one will even speak to us. For those that are looking at us like we're anti-vaxxers and all of that, man. Hey, we're doing this for you too. It might be tomorrow, it might be 10 years from now, but hopefully one day you'll look at, back on this and go, man, those guys have actually did it for us. And uh, hopefully we change your mind. So they've uh, just turned the uh, sprinklers on. Um, they're playing James Blunt over the speakers. You're beautiful. So it's actually quite pleasant. Oh, 
crowd size peaked out at about 18,000 on Saturday, dropped to about 12,000 on Sunday, and today would probably be closer to 10,000. We're standing here because we are going to commemorate the 380 souls who have passed away as a result of the forced jab. You know, suddenly we weren't allowed to have our own views or to be able to have a kind of broad discussion, which included potential downsides, many of which weren't actually known early on, but that's a downside in itself. I never wanted to have it in the first place. But at the end of the day, it was like we got to live, you know. Having trouble breathing, I like turned grey, and then collapsed off the chair onto the floor. My partner was holding my hand. But no, we had to basically stick to the narrative and we were told that, you know, you will be defined as anti-vaxxers if in any way you, you deviate from the narrative of safe and effective. Go from a working person as a registered nurse to now I'm not employed and I'm on chemotherapy, which I thought you only gave to people who had cancer, but they actually give it for severe inflammation. While they do believe that it is the vaccine that caused it, they will not confirm it until, they say, until the clinical trial is finished in five years' time. This is why we're protesting. This is why we need to speak up New Zealand. And creating a new beehive in our intention. When you make the right decision Uh, been protested in my political experience, which is longer than anybody there by miles. People have always turned up to be sh and, and listened and heard the protesters out. This has been unique and for the very worst because no one's listening in the corridors of power, and that's not the way freedom or democracy works. Sure. I, I couldn't believe that at this entire time in my life I'm watching this that uh, Parliament should unanimously say we're not going to talk to the protesters. They don't know who you are. And they should. Everybody ready for lunch? Yeah. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! I was terminated with the mandate. I was with adult special needs. I'm a fully qualified beauty therapist, massage therapist, close contact, so not allowed to work. Just couldn't believe they were letting people go, like the best of the best, the most empathetic, dedicated people with that level of integrity. They weren't going to cross that line. We feel compelled to be here because we've seen families divided, people lose their jobs and some people lose their homes and people be vaccine injured. So we were doing our job, but we also said to them, we know you're doing yours. They, they will literally be like a scrum. I was very peaceful, but as she continued to apply more pressure, I felt my sternum crack. That looks like they are getting in their cars and they are coming to join us. Freedom! Understanding that a peaceful, non-violent, prayerful demonstration could be attacked in very violent ways. Turn around and look for yourself, you're choking him out, man. And there is not a response from the mainstream public. It's very alarming to me. When these mandates came in around non-vaccinated people not being allowed into certain public spaces. Um, it reminded me of exactly what happened in South Africa. It's exactly the same thing. Every uniformed person working for the police had to be vaccinated or they would lose their job.
Is that limitation demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society? And the Crown didn't present any evidence in support of the benefit they were trying to achieve. <laughs> it was a moment of absolute shock for me to know that they were actually going to charge. I didn't think they would. And they went, <laughs> you know, our police aren't bad people. We are peaceful. They're our cousins and our brothers who just wanted to like make mum proud. We've had broken ribs when people end up getting pushed down and others get pushed down on top of them or they're kicked. Uh, we've had a lot of facial injuries. We've had a number of concussions come through. And obviously all the joints from being yanked and everything else. So that needs to stop. There are some people who have been hurt over the past couple of years and they're lashing out and we feel for those people. But underneath all of that, there is a river of filth. There is a river of anti-Semitism. There is a river of Islamophobia. I would say, Madam Speaker, that there is a river of genuine fascism in parts of the event that we see out the front of this parliament. There's not a brightness in the stars Other than what's burning in this heart But if we fight to keep this thing alive I'm pretty sure there's no end to us inside But what it's worth I die with you again A hundred more times multiplied by ten Hope I'll always have you in my mind And so that I know to find you every time